Today in this vlog, we're going to talk about cheeks. I think cheeks are one of the most important areas to work with in terms of making the eyes look brighter. But before we talk about cheeks, I want to talk to you about ugly cheeks, things that don't work and why they don't work. A lot of times when people come in for the thought of fat grafting, they have a repulsion of it because they think I'm going to make these big pumpkin cheeks, these large cheeks. In fact, the reason I'm doing this uh, vlog is in the last two weeks alone, I've seen some women that have come through that have either had Sculptra, Radius, Restlin, some kind of filler, or fat grafting, all of which looked really, really bad. And the reason it looked bad is that they had big cheeks. So when you have the concept of fat grafting, I don't want you to have said, oh, I saw that fat grafting over there it was terrible, or I saw that cheek being filled up. I don't want that kind of cheek. The problem with it is that, one, I don't make cheeks big. I make them full. I make them softer and balanced to the, to the rest of the face. And that's the next point that's so important, because I saw this lady just yesterday come through my door, and she had her cheeks done with Sculptra, and they were about this big. They were really large. And she was a young lady, and she only had a little bit of hollowness around her eyes, but she really needed that balanced. And so the doctor that was going to help her was going to put radius around the eyes, which in my opinion is just absolutely dreadful. It's something that is just not a good product around the eyes. But when you look at a cheek, it's got to be balanced. And how do you balance that cheek? Well, you've got to think about the transition from the cheek to the eye and the cheek to below the cheek. And so filling that and sculpting that area so it's blended and harmonious is so absolutely important when you're looking at cheeks. So I don't just want a big cheek. I want a cheek that looks balanced. So that is so important is that when you, I was just looking at um, one of my colleagues' fat grafting work here in Dallas. I was going through his before and afters. Um, and I was looking at these cheeks. They're just huge. And they're not balanced to the rest of the face. So fat grafting is not just about making big cheeks. So that is one big negative of making big cheeks is not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to create balance and structure. So when you look at my, my work, you can really see that there's a seamless blending. So it's a very, very different perspective when it comes to cheeks. The next negative thing about cheeks is the fact that if you just put an implant in, you've heard me talk about this, it's not a beautiful thing. Because an implant in an aging face, which is already evaporated with volume, like if you look at the Sharon Stone photo that I have in my, my, my blog section, the written blog section, you'll see that it's so bony and gaunt with thin skin that putting an implant won't be supported. It'll just look like a bony bone, I mean, a bone structure that's hiding underneath thin skin. So that's not a good option either. So the other reason is that, remember this, a cheek implant, just like filling it up with Sculpture or Radius or Restylin or Fat, you pull that cheek and you bring it out with the implant. Even if you can get pretty good volume and projection, the areas for the eye and the below it are now standing out even more, and it looks worse. So that's the other reason that a cheek by itself looks so, so very bad. OK, now we've just talked about why a cheek volume or cheek fullness can look bad, let's tr talk about why a cheek can look good and why it's so very important. I was just doing a consult about an hour ago, and the lady came in, and she already had a brow lift and everything done, and she, not by me, and very hollowed out, changed her identity. And she said, you know what? I can really see the hollow under my eyes, and let's get some Restylane done. And for her, when you're looking at where the best place to do it, if I had just one syringe of Restylane to do, it would be your cheeks. And I said, well, wait a second. I just stopped talking about, finished talking about not wanting to put too much here or there. I mean, sorry, right here so that these two don't stand out. But when you're putting just a little bit of volume in, it really provides a nice balance in that area so that if I, if I don't have the option of doing fat, I'm just doing some wrestling and perlane in that area, or radius, for example, then a little bit of volume into the anterior cheek works so dramatically well to make the face look so much more rested. And yes, yeah, so when someone says, I look tired, Doc. What can you do? And you give me a multiple choice option to make them look less tired. You can talk about the brow, the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, the cheek, or the jawline. And oftentimes, in about 80% of the times, where I want to put that one syringe of wrestling, it's not the smile lines, not the jowl, but the cheek. And when I create that little bit of anterior cheek fill, it does a few things. One, it makes the eyes look so much better. It's amazing. And all you've got to do to believe me is take a finger and just gently lift your cheek up and look in the mirror. You'll be blown away. You'll see that. When I did that for that lady, she said, oh my god, I look so much better. So a little bit of cheek fill. And where usually the anterior cheek 
just a little bit fill. And that's especially important for a woman. For a guy, I'm more conservative. You know my theory about being a little bit more gaunt with men. I don't like to fill the face too, too much. For a woman, I like a little bit fuller anterior cheek because it creates a really, really pretty face. But remember, as I told you earlier, it's in balance and harmony with the rest of the face, so it's not just standing out by itself. But the idea is that the cheek is one of the most important areas to work with. And remember, I divide the cheek and now into two areas, the anterior cheek and the cheek out here. The anterior cheek is one of the most critical areas because when you're gaunt like this as you get older, it just makes you look haggard and tired and there's no life to the skin. So in a summary of this vlog, I don't want to get too much further because I think we can get very complicated in, the, in our discussion. I just want to summarize this by saying, A, we talked about the bad cheeks, which are just big cheeks. That's not what I'm trying to do. And especially not balanced with the rest of the face, whether it be fat grafting, whether it be fillers, whether it be a cheek implant. Whatever it is, it just doesn't look good. But what looks good is a cheek that's balanced and blended, as I just said. But in addition to that, that cheek volume is one of the most important areas just to make someone look refreshed and soft, sometimes and oftentimes taking precedence over the lower eyelid, upper eyelid, brow, and jawline in terms of making someone look refreshed. Hopefully that was informative and in interesting for you in terms of just thinking about one principal area that I find very, very important when we're looking at facial rejuvenation.